Hello, hello, and welcome back to Temptations Ballad. Things are happening. <laughs> it's kind of exciting. Uh, from, with the <laughs> from within the fighting ring, Sid groaned and clutched his head in pain. His thoughts swarm. Yeah, swarm like a whirlpool of dread. Swam? It's probably swam. Hmm. <clears throat> it was becoming difficult to focus, or stay focused. As something was weaving into the inside of his skull. Huh? What was he doing again? Doesn't matter. That person in the brown cloak, he should probably listen to whatever he said whatever they say. They seem to know what they're doing. What's going on? Why did I... It's not late. Shut up. Uh, Sid's groans of pain fade as he stumbles onto his feet at a drunken pace. Beside him, Val was in a similar state as he stood up with unsteady feet. Mm, this spell makes, uh, always makes them so slow and brainless. Though, I suppose that isn't much of a downgrade for you, Presence. You, the crocodile. Hurry up and bring me the rubies. As you command. Uh, there is a ruby. Uh, here is the ruby you seek. Val reaches into his pocket and pulls out a large, glistening ruby. Like a zombie, he slowly uh, bumbles across the fighting ring towards the cloaked figure. Val approached. A cloaked figure immediately snatched the ruby out of the crocodile's hand. This is it. Where are the rest of them? One was lost. Uh, other, <clears throat> another was bought by an unknown noble. Wait, you've lost them? The figure's voice uh, hissed with uh, irky fury. You peasants are utterly useless. Do you have any idea what these rubies contain? What am I saying? Of course you don't. The figure shook their head in disbelief. In any case, I suppose two of our two out of four will suffice. What? The figure reached out to uh, grab the remaining rubies on the, by the, by the bidding table. And their finger slipped through the gem like smoke as the uh, ruby disappeared into a wisp of magic. A minor illusion. That boy. That little hyena must have stolen it off the table and switched it out with an illusion while nobody was looking. The cloaked figure whis uh, whipped their head towards the other side of the room in utter fury. They pointed at the, uh, sh the a shaking finger at Cole. You son of a... you lying son of a bitch! Uh, hand me the other ruby. Across the room, Cole groaned mindlessly as he uh, uh, thumbed across his pockets. After a moment, he pulled out the ruby that he, was, he had previously pit-pocketed from the table while Val wasn't looking. The hyena mumbled drunkenly and stumbled across the room. Here's uh, that ruby I stole. Dispel magic! A powerful uh, <clears throat> a jolt of electricity uh, suddenly uh, coursed through Cole's veins and snapped him awake. He jumped backwards, hair standing on end. Ow! Uh, that fucking hurt! Huh? Uh, what's happening? Why is everyone's eyes all glow- all red and glowy? Uh, Cole uh, clutched his hand- his head and glanced ac uh, around the room in confusion, as though he had just woken from a deep sleep. There's no time to explain! Prepare yourself, Sir Cole. The cloaked figure uh, took a step back in surprise. Oh, what is the meaning of this? A bolt of lightning ripped through the air and struck the uh, bidding table, narrowly missing the figure by an inch. The cloaked figure whirled around uh, to see where the lightning came from. Artemi reared back and steadied another crackling, uh, guiding? A guiding bolt in her hand, her eyes deadly serious. Undo your control over the people of this establishment and surrender immediately. 
Let me assure you, my next attack won't miss. The cloaked figure stared at the rumbling lightning javelin in Artemi's hand and laughed softly. A silly girl, you think me a fool. They snapped their fingers. Suddenly, Val, along with dozens of people from the audience, stumble forward and surround the um, figure in a shield of bodies. Artemi growled and lowered her hand. You despicable little... To use bystanders in such a vile fashion. <laughs> What's wrong, O oh Chosen One? Didn't you say you were to strike me down? I'm certain the church wouldn't mind if you fried a few not-so-innocent civilians in the crossfire. Do not mock me, scoundrel. Dispel magic. Uh? Counterspell. Oh, man, a solemn judgment. <laughs> Just pay half your life points, it's fine. Artemi flinched and uh, fell back as her magic was interrupted. <laughs> it felt as uh, though someone had drenched her to the bone with ice-cold water. You okay, Nighty? I am fine. Though, it appears casting won't be very e effective against this foe. The mind control, the mind controlled crowd began to advance towards the two of them, arms outstretched, like uh, growling, and growling uh, viciously. Val and Sid were among the controlled. The two larger fighters uh, leapt over the fighting ring fence and joined the crowd in their threatening approach. You can make this easier for everyone involved. Hand over the ruby, and I will happily release all the, the all these captives. What do you say, little chosen one? Artemi growled and raised her shield. She couldn't draw her sword against these civilians. They were being manipulated. It would not be right to strike them down, even in self-defense. Artemi felt Cole cower behind her, uh, gripping her shoulder anxiously. He does not appear to be very effective in <clears throat> in uh, direct combat. Defending him in, in <clears throat> defending him in the midst of a fight will prove difficult. The odds of this situation were simply, <clears throat> uh, simply not in their favor. Sir Cole. Huh? Uh, hey, hey, what are you doing? Uh, get your hands off me, you little... Artemi quickly, um, host hostile, hostered, ho holstered her shield and grabbed, um, Cole, uh, hoisting the smaller man over her shoulder. Hold on! With Cole in tow, Artemi made a mad dash through the crowd, barreling over several people and, uh, and she char <clears throat> as she charged across the room. Before the cloaked figure could issue any commands, the two of them had already disappeared uh, down the back alleys, uh, hallways. Uh, what? How did an entire crowd of you fail to catch two measly idiots? The cloaked figure jabbed uh, their finger towards the hallway. Catch them, and bring me the ruby. On your... <clears throat> on your heads be the... On your heads be the consequences? Hmm. Uh, should you fail? Everyone in the fight... <clears throat> in the uh, fight ring murmured in a daze, and followed the cloaked figure's directions. Their eyes train, uh, retained the sinister red glow of the, f <clears throat> of the figure's control. As you command... Will do! Uh, Artemi and Cole uh, skid to a stop as the sound of an angry crowd echoed through the narrow hall. All those mind-controlled people will reach them soon. Sir Cole, you are familiar with the layout of this building, yes? What is the best place to hide and formulate a plan? Well, let me down and maybe I'll tell you. Oh! Gamu? Oh no. Gamu, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, it didn't crash. It looked like it was going to. Ah, my apologies. I'm afraid I'm rather anxious at the moment. A Cole picked himself off the floor with an in 
indig indignant uh, scoff. We can't just hide in a random room. Those folks will probably be searching through every nook and cranny. We'll be found out eventually. Here, uh, move aside. Cole raises his hands, uh, sparks of uh, <clears throat> illus illusory magic uh, flickering between his fingertips. Okay, you know what, here, I'll turn off, uh, oh, is this a Windows issue? Hmm. Here, I'll turn off a couple programs I don't need. Maybe that? Hmm. <laughs> Hopefully it's fine in the recording. <laughs> uh, press the digitation. All the candles in the hallway were immediately snuffed out. It was so dark, Artemi could barely, uh, could, um, scarcely see her own hand in front of her face. Confused, sh confused shouting and yells reverberate through the, uh, dim hallway, along with the sound of angry men stumbling into each other. Ah, uh, I understand. This is an excellent plan, Sir Cole. Not yet. Minor illusion. The door to Clyde's office instantly disappeared in wisps of magic, leaving behind a solid wall. Incredible! My education at the church never covered illusion magic. I never thought it could be so versatile. This should keep them busy for a while. Those guys aren't very smart when they're being controlled. Come on, let's head inside. Go have sex with Clyde, it'll be funny. Artemi and Cole let out sighs of relief as the door to Clyde's office snapped shut behind them. And not a moment too soon. Heavy footsteps have flooded the hallway as the mind-controlled crowd caught up to them. <laughs> Where did they go? I don't see... I can't see a damn thing. They must have hid in one of the rooms. Search them! This was met with uh, monotone haulers, and agree haulers of agreement. A Cole and Artemi pressed their bodies against the door in anticipation of a forced, uh, forced entry, but none came. The crowd had um, ran into all the rooms except theirs, uh, thanks to Cole's illusion magic. It appears we have them fooled for now. Are you alright, Sir Cole? A Cole scoffs. Does it matter? Uh, uh, does it look like I'm alright? I blacked out for a moment during Sid's fight with Val, then I get zapped awake. And then I find an angry, mind-controlled crowd chasing me. What's the big idea? Well, <clears throat> they wouldn't be chasing you if you hadn't attempted to steal the ruby from Val under, uh, under Val's nose with illusion magic. I wasn't going to take any chances. As Papa always said, we don't, fair, we don't fight fair, we fight to win. That is dubious advice, to say the least. A Cole pulled the uh, large triangular ruby out of his pocket and waved it smugly in Artemi's face. If I hadn't stolen this, the hooded fellow would have succeeded in whatever horrible uh, thing they were planning to do here. I'd say this was a pretty smooth move on my part. Cole squinted at the office door. Who is the hooded fella, anyway? You got any ideas? Artemi shook her head dejectedly. I haven't a clue. It is clear that they are after the rubies from the prince's crown, and that they are powerful mages. Uh, he is a powerful mage. Uh, defeating them will prove difficult, especially when they have um, everyone in the fighting ring under their control. I hope to retreat and buy ourselves some time to formulate a plan. Artemi sighed and hung her head dejectedly. I am ashamed to say I was unable to free Sir Sid from that um, mage's control before we escaped. It's okay, he's, a link, he's the weak link in the group. It's fine. We only need these two. <clears throat> May the creator keep him safe while we sort things out. Hey, at least you got me to safety. Couldn't have uh, been a could have been a lot worse. A low groan suddenly reverberates from the back of the office. 
Uh, someone had stood up from behind the couch, uh, clutching their uh, head in a daze. Good. <laughs> oh, now I have to edit. Damn. <clears throat> uh, this feels worse than my hangover from last week. What happened? Artemi shrieked and covered her eyes. Uh, Sir Clyde, please, please make yourself decent. Huh? What are you fooling, uh, what are you folks doing in my office? Cole rolled his eyes and patted a, um, and patted a, uh, hor horrified Artemi's shoulder. Ah, uh, cover up your bits, Clyde. You know it's, um, uh, I know you like being nude when I'm around, but keep it to your, uh, keep it in your pants when we have company. Huh? Uh, Clyde blinks in, uh, blank blankly, his wits slowly returning. No. Oh. Right. I guess clothes are a good idea. Uh, hurry up, please. A few uh, minutes later, after Clyde struggled to put on his loincloth, the three of them huddled around the office, <clears throat> the office desk, to discuss the current situation. Artemi stood a considerable distance away from the couch, as uh, she examined. As she as she explained to Clyde uh, about the cloaked mage's actions. The tiger listened and massaged uh, his temples in disbelief. <clears throat> All this happened while I was out? Jeez, I don't remember anything after leaving the fighting ring to check, in my, to check on my office. <laughs> yeah. That mage must have charmed you and stole the crown while you were out. You gotta be more careful, Clyde. A tummy shot, um, Cole a confused glance. But I thought you said... Ouch! The hyena kicked her from under the table with a will you shut up, the, will you shut the fuck up look on his face. Artemi just, uh, looked even more confused. Meanwhile, Clyde was too busy, um, musing as in, musing in his own thoughts to notice their little exchange. I didn't think anyone had the guts to cause trouble in my fighting ring. And this is one strong mage we're dealing with. And not to mention dangerous. The Clyde scratches his chin thoughtfully. I'm afraid I won't uh, be very useful in the fighting department, unfortunately. Huh? But you are the leader of a fighting ring, are you not? Yeah. But I'm more of a businessman and behind-the-scenes sort of guy. This whole fighting outfit is just for show. I'm actually used to, I actually used to be a blacksmith by trade, until... Clyde glances at Cole out of the corner of his eyes and sighed. <clears throat> anyway, uh, back on the topic. If I understand the situation correctly, our next uh, best course of action should be to figure out a way to free everyone from this mage's spell. That will prove quite difficult. We cannot confront them head on, since the mage would just uh, force the mind control people to retaliate. Or use them as meat shields. Artemi nodded solemnly. I am not willing to risk the lives of innocents. <laughs> it appears that my dispel magic is able to break people free from the mage's hold. However, I cannot cast anything in the mage's presence, since they will simply cast Counterspell at my attempts. To make matters worse, I can only cast my spells a limited number of times without rest. It would be impossible for me to dispel every mind-controlled person in individually. I see. Then our best ch uh, chance is to land your dispel magic on the mage directly and end the mind control spell at the source. After that, we can just outnumber the mage and kick their ass. Artemi nodded, nodded again and snatched her and scratched her head uh, thoughtfully. The main problem is that the mage will see us coming and counterspell us before we get the chance. She um, uh, turned towards Cole, who had been uh, fidgeting nervously at the uh, at the uh, other end of the desk. Sir Cole. You are much more experienced with battle than I am, yes? Uh, what would a uh, viable strategy from your uh, point of view 
what would a um, viable strategy from your point of view? Cole jerked up from his nervous gaze uh, with a scoff. What? Why are you asking me? I'm not dealing with any of this shit. Artemi froze. Excuse me? Nicole hopped off the seat and paced uh, around the office with nervous energy. There's a ton of secrets, uh, secret exits to this building, right? Let's just run while we have the chance. After we get away, we can just call the church knights and city watch to take care of this. This isn't my problem. As uncomf an uncomfortable silence settled across the room, the, the, the table as Artemi and Clyde uh, stared at him in surprise. Clyde sighed and closed his eyes. You haven't changed a bit, have you? Artemi slammed her fist into the table and stood up. Her voice uh, hissed furiously through gritted teeth. Absolutely not! We must rescue everyone here, including Sir Sid. It is, point it is possible that this cloaked mage will harm the people here <clears throat> to remove witnesses. It is our duty to protect them while we still have the opportunity to do so. Cole averted his gaze while Artemi, <clears throat> Artemi's uh, intense glare and uh, crossed her arms. Hey, Sid is a nice guy and all, but I'm not risking my life for someone I just met. That's not my job. I just agreed to help you find your stuff, your missing stuff, and maybe earn some gold on the side. Battling a crazy mind-controlled mage was nowhere on the to-do list. Something snapped in Artemi. She uh, forcefully pulled uh, Cole close by his um, shoulder strap and uh, almost lifted him off, the <clears throat> off his feet. Her fangs bared inches from his face. Sir Sid, I believed in you. He believed you were a good person, someone worth fighting for. How can you just abandon him? Cole's heart raced painfully against, the <clears throat> against his chest as he leaned back from the furious knight. Artemi's usual polite grin vanished into a feral rage. But, well, uh, Sid's kind of a simpleton. He's probably fighting for everyone who gave him, a t <clears throat> who gave him the time of day. Artemi gr <clears throat> Artemi's grip on him tightened. He shielded you with his, <clears throat> with his own body during the wagon crash this morning. He was willing to fight countless men in this illegal fighting ring simply because you commanded him to do so. Did he truly misplace his trust on a shameless coward? Artemi spat uh, the word with like venom. Sir Sid was a, has a loving mother waiting for him, a family that actually cares. What will you tell them when you leave their son dead? Is this who the son of Maro Bronebreaker truly is? A heavy uh, and tense silence filled the room, interrupted only by Artemi's uh, fuming growl <clears throat> and uh, Cole's thundering heartbeat. The small hyena swallowed, his, th his shoulders shaking. You sure you want a coward helping you? The fist that kept Cole hoisted in uh, midair <clears throat> suddenly laxed. The hyena drops to the ground with a yelp. Artemi let out a deep sigh as she stood over him. Her eyes were closed uh, and, <clears throat> and brow furrowed in her effort to wrestle with her own temper. I know that you are capable of great acts of kindness if you truly wish to do so. Perhaps courage, too. I don't understand. What is stopping you? The familiar... <clears throat> that familiar, um... A hollow feeling engulfed Cole's uh, chest once again, once more. As he uh, stared up at Artemi's disappointed eyes, he slowly picked himself off the floor with a sigh. It always came back to dis <clears throat> came back to disappointing people, didn't it? Clyde gently cleared his throat. Uh, not to kick a, a little guy while he's down, but things will get even more difficult with will uh, will be difficult even with Cole's help. It's just the three of us against an entirety of a fighting ring crowd. What can we actually do in this kind of situation? Well... Quite a bit. 
if you put a little thought into it. Cole sighed and began digging through his pockets. He pulled out an arcane crystal with a glint in his eye. I think I've had a, a decent plan to dis- I think I've uh, got a decent plan to dispel that mage's control. Hey, Nighty, uh, can you do something for me with that sp with that magic of yours? Artemi stares at Cole quietly for a, for several minutes moments. Can we count on your help? The anger in her eyes had subsided, leaving only a tired, withered gaze. Even so, Cole felt his chest lurch as uh, they made eye contact. <clears throat> sure. Artemi sighed. Very well, Cole. Explain your plan. Okay. I'll um I'll end the part here. So I'll uh, I'll see you around everyone.